proving parallelograms in the coordinate plane. This is 6.3b with seven previous videos for chapter 6 that are in the geometry playlist. To say that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram by definition, we must show that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. For a quadrilateral to be a parallelogram, it must satisfy at least one of these conditions. That both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, that's the definition. One pair of opposite sides are parallel and congruent. That was the first theorem from the last video. Both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. That was from the second theorem. Both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. That was from the third theorem. And one angle is supplementary to both of its consecutive angles. That was the fourth theorem. And finally, the diagonals bisect each other. That was the fifth theorem. So if you didn't see the previous video, 6.3a, you should really watch it because I don't want you to become confused. It says to show that quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram, and it wants us to use these ordered pairs and the definition of a parallelogram. So the first thing we do is we plot these ordered pairs, and we can draw line segments to connect the points, can't we? And then we'll find the slope of both pairs of opposite sides. We'll find this slope, and we'll find that slope, and compare them. So we use a slope formula, find the rise and the run. For AB, that's this one, we get a 7 minus 2 over a negative 2 minus a negative 3, which gives us a 5 over 1, which gives us a slope of 5. And for CD, we do the formula and the math, and it's also a 5. So that tells us, since they have the same slope, that these two are parallel. Now we're going to do BC, this one, and compare it to this one, AD or DA. We do BC, and in the slope formula, we put in the ordered pairs for x1, y1, x2, y2, and we get a negative 3 fourths. We do it for segment DA, and we also get a negative 3 fourths. So we know those two are parallel. And since both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, ABCD is a parallelogram by definition. The definition says both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Okay? Now it says, show that quadrilateral FGHJ is a parallelogram, and it wants us to use the given ordered pair points and theorem 6.3.1. And that theorem says one pair of opposite sides are parallel and congruent. So we find the slopes and lengths of the pair of the opposite sides. We use the slope formula for GH, this one, and we're going to compare it to JF, this one, and for GH, we get a 1, 6, and for segment JF, we get a 1, 6. So we know these two are parallel. They have the same slope. Now what we're going to do, because we need to find the lengths of the opposite sides, is we're going to use the distance formula to find their lengths to compare them. Okay? So remember, it's the distance, and then we put in the ordered pairs here. So for GH, that is going to be this one here. We put it into the distance formula, and it is equal to the square root of 37. We do it for JF. We put it into the distance formula, and we get the square root of 37 also. And segment GH and segment JF have the same slope, so segment GH is parallel to segment JF. And since GH is equal to JF, they both have square root of 37, segment GH is congruent to segment JF. So by the theorem, 6.3.1, that says one pair of opposite sides are parallel and congruent, FGHJ is a parallelogram. All right? So for a quadrilateral to be a parallelogram, it must satisfy at least one of the six conditions, the definition of a parallelogram and one of the five properties. And we can use the given information about a figure to decide which condition is best to use. And take a look at this diagram. See this? It holds a monocular or a binoc binoculars. So binoculars, that has the two lenses, one for each eye. A monocular has just one, like a telescope, okay? So in a parallelogram mount, that's what this is, and it's got bolts here, and it can move, okay? There's bolts at P, Q, R, and S. So that PQ is equal to RS, they're the same length, 
and QR is equal to SP. These are the same length. And the frame PQRS moves when you raise or lower the binoculars. So it's like the bolts are like hinges, okay? So why is PQRS always a parallelogram? Well, when we move the binoculars, the angle measures change, but PQ, QR, RS, and SP stay the same. So it's always true that PQ is equal to RS. This is always equal to this. Those lengths don't change. And it's always true that QR, this top one, is always equal to SP, the bottom one. And since both pairs of opposite sides of the same quadrilateral are congruent, PQRS is always a parallelogram. So that's the definition. Both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, right? And from our second theorem that said both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, okay? So because of the, the bolts that are in here, they're always going to be parallel because of the way it moves, all right? Our next lesson is properties of rectangle 6.4a, and all four of these videos are part of lesson 6.4a. So after rectangles, we're going to talk about rhombuses and then squares, and then we're actually going to get our compass and construct a rhombus, okay? So that's it for 6.3b. I hope you understood, and hit that like button for me. Bye.